Chat, episode four of Let's Chat. Welcome everyone, I'm David Berry, your host, back by popular demand, and to my right, who's been just shoved down a peg, Graham Cooper, the man. I know where I stand now. That's Gee, right. One episode, get punted. Yeah, that's well, that's what happens, mate. When, a, when an expert comes in, that's what happens. And a very special guest today with us, Connor Sebi, a young rugby, rugby WA up and coming junior in the future force, absolute legend from West Scarborough. He's a big man. His camera on the right is about 10 inches higher than Graham's and I, so we're looking forward to having a chat to him later. Let's kick straight into it. We had round one of the Fortescue Premier Grade last week, and it was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There was some huge rugby played, and Coops, I don't know about you, you were out there in the middle for one game, but how good was it to have rugby back in WA? Oh, mate, like being down at UWA v West on the weekend, just the vibe around um, the community with, with rugby being back was, was awesome, good to see heaps of people on the hill at UWA and by watching a couple of other games there was, there was some good crowds all, all around Perth. Absolutely, I was down at Cottesloe watching them take on uh, Wanneroo, up at Wanneroo should I say, and it was a massive crowd. Great to see all three teams, all three grades playing as well. It was fantastic, the rugby gods had kissed us on the head with some weather as well which was fantastic. Um, let's get straight into some of those results. Very interesting first game, Kalamunda Perth Bayswater in a draw, 24 all. Unbelievable. Yeah, um, quite surprising to be honest. Um, the the Cala boys, I think before the season were a little bit slow to get down to training, so um, getting that ball rolling will be handy uh, moving into round two. But Baysy, a bit of a surprise package this year maybe. Absolutely, the mighty numbats out there in Bayswater just might be coming up with some good footy this year. Cottesloe had a pretty easy win over Wanneroo in the end, 44-12, I was at that game. Actually, the score didn't really sort of tell the story of the game very well. I actually thought Wanneroo played some really good footy. Their forward pack is gonna be immense this year, and they showed it because Cottesloe's got a pretty sharp forward pack themselves. But uh, Cottesloe were too strong out wide, a couple of their wingers scoring a few tries, and um, their front row, once again, set piece was fantastic, and they just, went, once they get that scrum in the middle of the field, very hard to stop people like Ali Haney, who's bursting through the line. Cottesloe are going to be a, a good team again this year. Netherlands, Coastal Cavaliers, a very interesting scoreline. 22-19, Netherlands just getting up. I love seeing this, Coops. Coastal Cavs, a team just that you want to get behind. Come up to Netherlands, not always an easy game, and nearly pipped them. Yeah, unfortunately, a, a, a quick line out on the, on the buzzer to score in the corner for the Netties boys there. So, mate, Cavs, once again, I think are going to upset a few people this year, hopefully. Um, they show a lot of heart. Mm, and that's what you want to see. We want to see a great competitive competition this year. And I think we will. Associates go over Arcs fairly easily, 55-0. They'll be very happy down at Soaks. Interesting to see their team. Looks like a few new faces running around. That's good to see. Always good to see new fresh faces in footy in WA. Now, Coops, please, go into detail about this game. And I know we're going to talk to Connor about this later because he's probably a little bit salty about that result. But <laughs> UWA taking out a one-point win over West Scarborough, 33-32. How did that go down? Yeah, so um, UWA boys, I think, got um, got off to a, a bit of a lead with three quick penalty goals early in the game. And then the, um, the West boys putting six unanswered. Um, unfortunately, very good tries, but all scored um, on the touchline, so it made it a little bit difficult for their, their kicker to kick the goals, and ultimately that's what it came down to, was a kick on the buzzer to win for the UWA boys. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a, a different second half and a, a different bench that came on for the UWA boys that really turned it. Well, good win for them, they'll be very happy with that, because West are gonna be another strong team this year. You can see players like David, David sorry, Louis David, the human wrecking ball, he's just, he gets better every year almost. He gets greyer up top, but better every year. He's an absolute superstar. Junior Lutt Brothers took down the Southern Lions 31-22. Another good game. Junior Lutt will be there and thereabouts, I think, again. They've always had a pretty solid team, but hopefully they can win a few more games than last year and maybe pop up into that top echelon of the table, maybe. Yeah, I think the Junior Lutt boys this year, a bit more of a focus around their, their juniors, so a lot of club boys in that team. Yep. Um, uh, less guys that have, that have come in, so hopefully those young guys do perform and, and put some wins on the board for them. Absolutely. And Palmyra, who are going to be, I think, my pick to be the dark horse of the season this year. They uh, absolutely pumped Curtin Uni 76 to 12. Uh, Curtin, once again, I think, look, just happy to be playing rugby. That club, fantastic club, good feeling around there. If you do get a chance to go out and watch a game of footy, it's brilliant out of Curtin University. Great pitch. They'll, uh, look, they'll just want to get a win on the board this season, I think. But great to see they've got a few new signings. They've got some 
big Danish seven they're talking about. Apparently he's with Vikings, I don't know. Apparently he's not too bad. Doesn't mind a beer either. But uh, also big shout out, Richard Patterson Hyde. He's a, a battler, third grade player. He plays his 50th cap for the Goats this week. So good luck, mate. Hope you get a win. Hope you score a try. But once again, amazing to have rugby back in Western Australia. Round one, done and dusted. Some good games, some not so good games, but hopefully that'll progress as the weeks to come. Well, that's it for Community Rugby this weekend, but let's move on to the big stuff. The Western Force are back in Super Rugby this weekend. They take on mass rivals, the New South Wales Waratahs, this weekend, Saturday. It's huge. I can't wait. 5.15 WA time on Fox. Fox now now and KO. Coops, tell me you're jacked for this. Oh, mate, so excited. I think um, the last time we played the Tars, I think they, they, they dusted them 41-11 or something like that. So, That's correct, we did. Um, and a bit of bit of niggle as well. I, I, I can't see that changing in this game. So I'm um, pretty excited for the WA team to, to be back involved for sure. Absolutely. And interesting times in Super Rugby overall with the hub. So the force have, have flown out. They'll now be based in the Hunter Valley over in New South Wales and then travelling from there. So they'll be in their little community. But knowing that a few of the boys really well, the team are very excited just to be there and playing footy at all. But also just to be back in Super Rugby, I think. And there's a few players traditionally from the force that were in Super Rugby, guys like the Captain Ian Pryor, who are just, it's a bit of a weird feeling being back, but I think they're just excited to play rugby against you know a really good calibre team like the Waratahs and the rest of the competition. Yeah, I think this, um, the team that they put out on the weekend's got a, a, a really good balance between ex-Super Rugby players. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously WA boys, I think there's six um, homegrown WA boys in the team this week. Um, and then obviously the, the new guys um, coming into that squad, like an Ollie Callan, for example, a, a gun 18 year old from, from WA. So Love seeing that. I mean, as you said, we looked at the team list earlier. I think there's about 12 players that have played Super Rugby before, which I think will give that team a bit of confidence that they've been at that level. Guys like Marcel Baraki, who have played 50 caps of Super Rugby before. Um, Jack McGregor had a handful for, for the Melbourne Rebels, and he's an absolute gun. We love Jack McGregor, love the way he plays. And then the influx of some really old heads that I say, Johnny Lance will hate this, but Johnny Lance coming into to the fly half position, nearly 100 games or possibly even 100 games of Super Rugby, two championships under his belt for the Reds and the Waratahs, just a wealth of experience bringing in. And the gold boy, the Adonis, Kyle Goblin sitting on the bench, he'll come on and provide run, skill, expertise and, and just experience on the field. So I think that, I think the Tars may have thought a few weeks ago this will be a pretty early, easy win for them in round two, but I don't necessarily think they're going to get that. And, you know, Tim Sampson says time and time again that we're not just here to make up numbers, we're here to be competitive. And I think that's super important. But also, I think they will be. I mean, Kieran Longbottom, champion player. Jeremy Thrush could still be playing in any league in any team in the world. He is an absolute superstar. So they've got what it takes. But you mentioned earlier the thing I love about this team is just how much homegrown WA talent there is. I mean, Tevin Ferris at number seven, absolute star. Come up through the Netherlands pathway, then through Future Force made his way in, he's a gun. Brad Lacey, he's been around for a long time. Great to see him playing Super Rugby again too. I mean, there's just, there's a whole host of them and it's just fantastic to see some WA boys playing professional rugby again, it's just great. I mean, and then we've got a few WA boys playing in other teams, you know? The Hayla Petties playing for the Rebels. It's just, it's good to see that our pathway is working and now we're seeing the fruition in Super Rugby. Yeah, can't wait for this big fella next to us to be up there one day. Too. Absolutely, we'll talk to him very shortly, but firstly, Rugby.com.au put together a cracker video, which is the rivalries reignited. Um, this got my blood absolutely pumping, just showing all the past matches between the Force and the Waratahs, just seeing how much niggle there is, and I guarantee there will be some out there this weekend. Take a look. It's the rebirth of old rivalries. Some of the games we played against the Tars has been some absolute epic battles. A huge game first up and um, you know just a, a big moment for this club and its history. So they were our last game and for them to be our first game back is, is pretty special. There's always a bit of rivalry there so uh, won't be short of physicality I'm sure. Uh, building for these games you know you've got to be on point, you know you've got to be uh, ready to go and uh, you've got to, got to bring the aggression because they are so we've got to um, 
we got we got to go over there and uh, really impose ourselves on them. It'll be uh, it'll be a physical encounter, and um, they're always pretty bruising out there, so it'll be uh, a good one to get stuck into first up. So there's the first try of the match. It brings a lot of emotion, but also a lot of excitement. I can see on the faces of all the boys, guys are really excited to just start playing rugby again, and for us to be given an opportunity to play against Australia's best, I think it's it's kind of what we thrive on. Uh, the most recent game was obviously uh, Matt Hodgson's farewell game. And, you know, it was also our, our captain Ian Pryor's 50th game. Um, being my last game of Super Rugby and last game for the Force, but also uh, what is now known as the last game the Force played in Super Rugby. So it was a, a pretty special night. A fairy tale ending for Matt Hodgson. It's been a roller coaster. Um, been a, a lot of lows, but a lot of highs. And I think where we are today is um, pretty special. I think. Um, it's exciting to test what we've done over the last three years against the best in Australia and, and show that we do have a product over here. Resilience is not something that you can just have. Resilience is something that you get over time with dealing with situations and, and circumstances that you weren't expecting. Um, we've definitely grown very strong because of situations we've been put in. Instead of us seeing them as negatives, what we've done is we've turned those difficult moments into positives for us. We've seen it as an opportunity to work harder. This is again just another opportunity for us to show how hard we've been working and how hungry we are to play rugby at the highest level. pretty excited it's going to be an amazing weekend of rugby fantastic to see the force back in super rugby and taking on the new south wales waratahs this saturday but just jumping back to what we were talking about earlier in the fact that the the junior pathway the future force pathway in wa is well and truly a light we've got so many great players coming up through the ranks and moving up into the force one of them to my right connor sevi who joins us today is going to be a superstar of the future and we're hoping to see him in the the blue and gold very shortly for the Western Force, but he joins us today. A great West Scarborough boar, had a tough loss on the weekend, but Connor, thanks so much for joining us on Let's Chat, mate. Um, how how are you going and how is it playing at West this season? Yeah, it's been going pretty good. Um, so just coming up through the ranks of being a young boy since back in when I was five, back in um, West Scarborough, or West Subiaco days. Um, it's been pretty good to jump back into the top team as um, I've been thrown down in the deep end because uh, it's my first year back ever since schoolboys rugby. Um, yeah, we've been pretty good, been trudging along, we've um, had some pretty good games for the preseason, but um, yeah, just had a bad, bad loss this past weekend. Um, Connor, um, obviously first first year um, in the Premier Grade squad at West, um, obviously Leo Falaninko being the head coach there, obviously he's a, a, a big set piece dominant coach, how's he been for your development down at West? Yeah, he's impacted um, pretty big to my game since he's a lock himself. I've um, taken a lot of pointers on um, how to how my line out work is as he was um, international player for some more. He's, um, he's been really good help with um, my game so far this year. Fantastic. Um, obviously, um, coming through the ranks of the Future Four squad, you've been able to um, train with the senior squad, the Force boys, a couple of times yeah. during the the pre-season, how did that go for you? Yeah, it's a pretty big step up as um, since I've been coming, since I've come from the schoolboys comp, it's uh, pretty big and bigger bodies, as um, as you can see with all the boys. Um, it's definitely a big learning curve as um, I'm quite young and getting up with all these boys that have about five, ten plus years of experience. It's pretty good to um, learn off them and um, how they train and what they do every day. Nice. I guess speaking about that, you've sort of joined the senior academy. Is that helping you as well build those skills and, and build confidence in yourself that you're actually good enough to go out there and play that senior level rugby? Yeah, as I'm at the age of, um, I am still young, but I'm also in the age of the senior players. I can relate to the senior boys and also be at the same age group as the young boys. So I am learning pretty pretty big um, out here in um, the senior academy, so it's pretty good. That's great, mate. And being in such close quarters with the force and the future force, who are, who are some of the players that you're liking coming out of out of the force or even in the force team currently? Who, who do you look up to and go, that's that's the pathway I want to be and that's the player I want to be? Oh yeah, definitely Jeremy Thrush for sure because um, as he's a, I'm a New Zealand boy, he's also a New Zealand boy, he's um, played through the ranks there, but um, definitely as he's got the years of experience, you know, he's taken me under his wing a couple of times when I've been playing up with the force, uh, training up with the force. Yeah, it's definitely nice to um, see him play for once. 
And mate, you, you play under Steve Anderson, the old grouch. Um, he's a great coach, got a lot of experience. And Dylan Parsons, a great young coach. How's that going? How, how's, how is it being trained underneath those two gents? Yeah, it's um, definitely different as, um, yeah, as again, I've come from the schoolboy comp. It's um, definitely a big, big step up as Ando is very um, experienced and um, very smart coach and we have to just adapt to his way of coaching, but it's, it's definitely benefiting all of us in the senior academy. Deals um, as a bad coach, I'm not, as, <laughs> not in my um, area of um, um, play, but um, yeah, he's still, he's still really nice. Deals, he, uh, we learn a lot off him because he's, um, well, he's a West boy as well, so I, I definitely look up, after, um, look up to him as well, so it's pretty good. Yeah, that's great. Connor, thanks so much for joining us, mate. Cheers. Fantastic to see uh, the pathway just absolutely beaming at the moment, and as we spoke about before, six players, six WA players that have come up through that pathway playing for the Western Force this weekend. So what we're doing is working and people like Steve Anderson in the position that he's in doing a fantastic job just moulding our young players and, and creating them and, and building them into super rugby level players. Yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Connor. We're going to move on now to this weekend's games of Fortescue Premier Grade Rugby. A couple of crackers. First one up I want to talk about because the man to the right is going to be playing. Palmyra taking on West Scarborough. This to me is almost game of the round. Two very good young up and coming teams. And something I'm very interested to see is yourself kind of going up against the future force candidate, Jackson Pugh. Mate, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, so um, Jackson's, uh, yeah, he's been with me since I was uh, in the junior academy. He's been in the senior academy. We've definitely had, um, he's definitely taken me under his wing as well when he was up there. But um, hopefully this week I um, get to give him a film. Some shoulders, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should be able to, should be have a good, um, good hit out this weekend. So should be good. Absolutely, that's going to be a cracker game, Coops. What's up next, mate? Um, next one's Netherlands v Arks down at the foreshore. So the first home game for the Netties boys. Um, I think they might have to put a, a, a bit of a better performance, especially in the first half, mm. um, against the Arks boys. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a big one for them to, to get that ball rolling, especially in a new team. Absolutely, it'd be great to see Arks get out there and put up a better performance this week as well. Curtin with their first home game of the season, they're taking on Joondalup. That's going to be a pretty tough game for them this weekend. Joondalup seems to play really well away from home as well. But once again, Curtin Uni will need to put in a better performance if they want to if they want to beat teams like Joondalup. So that's, that's the next one off the ranks. The Coastal Cavs take on the Southern Lions. A bit of a derby down in Rockingham this weekend. Should be an absolute cracker. That's anyone's game this week, and let's be honest, both of those teams need to win this one if they want to stay in touch with the top of the competition. So, who, who's your tip there, Graham? Um, I think after watching the Cavs last weekend um, against Nettys, I think I'm going to pick them. Um, but saying that, Southern Lions boys didn't play too badly for periods mm. during Cottesloe in a couple of trials um, earlier in the season. So, But I think the Cavs, I reckon, by about 15. Ooh, good tip. Uh, I like that. Put some money on that one. <laughs> Sportsbet, we need you. Sponsor us. Uh, next up, Wanneroo UWA. This would be a good game as well. I'll be interested because I don't think UWA's forward pack's up to, up to the Wanneroo forward pack. So I think that's going to be interesting. But where they will probably touch them up is out wide, out with their backs. They've got some speed out in their wings, UWA. And uh, if I think possibly Rory O'Sullivan comes into that team for UWA this week. Yeah, I think the, the big thing for the, the UWA boys is how they structure their back row. Mm. Um, obviously, with O'Sullivan coming off the bench last week and having such an impact, whether he starts. Sure. And whether Corey Thomas, obviously, was playing in the Sunwolf squad at the beginning of the year before they left Super Rugby, is back at number six for UWA. So And he was really good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Really made a mess of the breakdown for um, for the West boys on the weekend. So, yeah, I think it, it'll be one up front. I like that. I like that a lot. We love the dark art to the forwards being up and about. That's very good. Perth Bayswater taking on Associates. This should be another good game. Soak's coming off a very strong wing against Arcs. But we saw Perth, what, Perth Bayswater really stick it to Kalamunda last weekend. So hopefully they can stick it to the Soaks boys, but it should be a good clash. Yeah, I think the, the Baysy boys are, are trying to be a little bit more abrasive this year, um, which showed against the Caller boys last week. Um, obviously coached really well there by Brendan Logue. Um, mm. So their skills throughout the, the pre-season have, have definitely improved. So hopefully we can see them put a, uh, put a good fight up against Soaks this weekend. Absolutely, and a cracker match of the round this week. Out of the nest, the mighty Cottesloe Seagulls taking on the big bulls, Kalamunda. This should be a cracker game. I feel like there might be a little bit of feeling in this with a, a few players from Kalamunda 
leaving in last season, including a big, big up-and-coming prop, Reginald Churchwood. Mate, can you tell me a little bit about Reggie? Yeah, um, mate, having him, I think, in the West Scott trial match, um, obviously, I think he's 22, uh, big unit, um, dominant at scrum time, but mm. more importantly, loves to carry the football and whack guys in D as well. So um, I think with the Caller boys being a big side, he comes in and he'll have to assert his dominance in that physicality point of view early in the game. Obviously, being a, an ex Caller boy, there's going to be a bit of feeling there as well. So it's whether the young young dog can um, can hold on. And then obviously, um, Terrell Berryman in the front row as well, mm. being an ex Caller boy. Um, so I think that front row battle um, in that game. And then obviously, big Tob Hoskins, number eight, captain of, of Cot via winger, um, the big number eight at Caller, who I think had a bit of a, a, a day out against Basie last weekend. So, yeah, it should be a good game. I can wholeheartedly say, sitting on the sideline against Cot Wanneroo last week, that Reginald was literally sucking the souls out of some of the Wanneroo boys. He is nasty out of the field. Very much looking forward to that game. Huge week of community rugby ahead. Fortescue Premier Grade. Get down there. That game also, Cottesloe v Calamunda, will be live streamed. LMSC. Head to Rugby Day Community Facebook page. Head there. Watch it live. Crack a week ahead. How good rugby in Western Australia. Well, here we are. My favourite section of this show. TMO Clip of the Week. Love this. Coops, what have we got today? Yeah, so this week it comes from Southern Lions. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little intercept try, actually, from the, their number 12 or inside centre. Um, plucks it out of nowhere and then has a, a dash to the line, nearly gets dragged down on the, on the try line. So um, let's have a watch. Oh, pull up, pull up in the German. You're cool with nervous. You're a gang came from the circus. You will never ever make no earnings. Pull up, pull up in the German. You're cool with nervous. You're a gang came from the circus. How good is that? The big man going over. As I said, Coops, he looked like he might have been on a bit of a treadmill there for the last 10, 10 it metres. Looked like you actually. Yeah, he looked a little, little bit larger, but hey, he got there in the end, did the job. Well done, mate. Great try. Once again, my favourite segment. Absolutely love that. It, music was interesting on that clip. Yeah, Reese Delamere, the social media guru down at Southern Lions, putting a bit of background music to that, which I don't mind. I don't mind it at all. Keep that stuff coming. Well, that's it for Let's Chat this week. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to Connor Sevy, the big man, for coming in, giving us a bit of insight into how he's going through the pathway, and hopefully Wes get a win this week against Palmyra. We'll be back next week. Thanks very much. Yeah.